Hi, welcome to SBR Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. We are at the All-Star break in the NBA regular season, and we're talking right now with uh, SBR contributor Doug Upstone, who uh, covers basketball as well. Doug Upstone, thanks for being back with us. Peter, I'm glad to be back here once again. And yes, talking a little uh, NBA basketball this time around. And uh, we got some teams uh, that uh, are, once again, are going to miss the playoffs, having tough seasons, and might be looking to go some different directions. All right. So now we're going to talk about rebuilding teams. And these are the kinds of teams that can sneak up on you at the end of the regular season and actually start to have betting value. Teams that are rebuilding, that they're big underdogs game in and game out. They've been bad all year. These are teams that I like to look out for at the end of the year uh, to maybe have betting value on. So let's hear what you have to tell about possible uh, rebuilding teams in the second half. Yeah, you know, and, and to your point, Peter, actually, I, I do agree with you, and, and it's really hard for, you know, whether it be sports bettors or NBA handicappers, you know, trying to come up with these things because you run into those situations. Yes, there are certain value, but then all of a sudden you start to see some, you know, 15s, 17s, and 18s, and these teams still, the, the favorites still cover, so that adds a lot of confusion coming down the stretch. But one of the teams that, you know, that I'm looking at is uh, Utah. And one of the things that they, you know, they're going to miss the playoffs again. And both Trey Burke and Enos Kantner have fallen out of the rotation or have more limited playing time. And Dante Exum and uh, Rodney uh, Gobert have kind of taken their place. But I'm not sure if that would be a wise trade to move the first two guys because, you know, they're actually still quite talented players. Not everybody uh, on the, in the NBA is really sold on these uh, other two players in terms of long-term projections. Not saying Burke and Kantner are great, but, you know, if Utah really wants to start heading back north and, and become a playoff contender, I'm not sure that's the right direction to go. All right, interesting. I'm not sure what I think about Utah as of right now. What else do you have for us, Doug? Uh, two other teams that come to mind are Sacramento. The Kings are, Peter, they're a complete disaster. You know, they're on their third coach uh, at, at going into the second half of the season. And other than DeMarcus Cousins and uh, Ben McLemore, I don't see anybody here that, that can't be had, okay, if, if some team wants him. Uh, Rudy Gay would be the obvious choice, but he ha has a big contract. And George Carl coming in, I'm not really sure what direction he's going to want to go, if he's going to want to change this thing up and, and to, to go, you know, uh, to start rebuilding immediately or to, or to just shut it down, you know, finish out the season and go next year and see what they can do. So Sacramento, to me, certainly continues to be look, look like play against material. Conversely, Philadelphia, you know, has some good, uh, some good young players. You know, they started tanking a few years ago, but yet you know, you've got uh, no uh, Norlands Noel and Michael Carter-Williams, who are both very good players. And one other player that, that is available to a, a playoff contender, and I'm, I'm going to do my best to get this name right because it's a tough one, Luke Richard Butte, or say, yeah, uh, M, M, excuse me. No, Luke go Richard, ahead. You can do it. M, you can do it, Doug. You I, can I, I, do I'm, it. I'm working. You can do it. Uh, Bay Mute. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's close enough. Okay. The, uh, he can be had, no matter what his name is. He can be had from Philadelphia for a team that's looking for a defensive minded forward who can shut down the opposing player, and he's going to be a free agent as well this year. So, those two teams, and, and Philadelphia actually has been a pretty good bet here in the yeah. last. Uh, month to six weeks. Yeah, for sure, though, uh, Sacramento is a complete disaster, and I could easily see them actually being one of those teams that's a big uh, underdog game in and game out and actually losing against the spread anyway. All right, is that it? That you? Uh, is that all you want to I, talk about? I got, I got two more here for okay. you, and I'll make it quick. The Orlando Magic, okay, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they, their spread record is actually uh, above 500, and I think one of the reasons that it is is because they have a nice trio of veteran players in Channing Frye, Ben Gordon, and Luke Ridenauer, who are all good shooters. And I think it would be a wise decision for them to keep those guys, to go with the young players that they have, to keep trying to build something. Now, maybe next year, maybe you'll let one go, but I think if you try and let one go right now, I think you disrupt some of the chemistry. And I mean, their record certainly isn't very good, but, you know, I think you disrupt what they're trying to do at the present time. There are going to be some changes. A new coach will be in place. And I think it's best just to leave it alone. And then, Peter, we have the Los Angeles Lakers. Mm -hmm. Jim Buss, oh, my goodness, what a terrible, terrible owner. And he has helped ruin the Lakers franchise with, with all of his might in spite of his father's best wishes. They have two assets on that team. It's Ed Davis and Jordan Hill. And if they don't move both of those and come to the realization they are starting from scratch, from rebuilding, they're stupid. Yeah. I don't know how else to put it. You know, and the, so the, to me, the Lakers certainly they're going to cover their fair amount of games, but I think they're just going to be pr basically play against material the rest of the year. Yeah, I th kind of uh, agree with you, Doug. And yeah, Orlando's an interesting team. Uh, I could definitely see them. You make some great points about them. I could see them being one of those uh, sort of bottom tier teams that maintains a decent betting value uh, over a large portion of the second half. All right, Doug Upson, thanks so much for your thoughts. Thank you, Peter.